Hello and welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman and today is National Quilting Day. And today I decided I wanted to spend some time downstairs in my quilting studio getting my scrap stash cut, sorted, organized, and stored. I have been working on a lot of projects in the last few months and I have a lot of remnants. So I need to get them cut, sorted, organized, and stored so that I have beautiful scraps already cut and ready to go to make beautiful quilts. Before I get started, I do want to let you know that if you're needing information on how to get your scrap stash completely ready to go and to use and make beautiful quilts with it, I do have my Speedy Solutions Techniques book um, out there and I have a corresponding lecture that's available out on YouTube and you can watch that from beginning to end. It will show you everything you need to know to get your scraps cut, sorted, organized and stored and then ready to use so that you'll actually make some beautiful quilts with your scrap stash. I do have a corresponding patterns book as well. Between these two books you get not only the techniques on how to do it, but you also get a total of 17 beautiful scrappy patterns. I'll have a link below in my description box here that will take you out to my website so you know where to find those. I will also link the video below so that you can watch the speedy solutions to cut and sort your scrap stash and get your scrap stash ready to go to make beautiful quilts. Now before I get started, I just want to share with you a few details. When I get myself ready to get my scrap stash cut, sorted, and organizing number one I have an ironing a pressing station so here on my left I have my pressing station with my iron ready to go I do like to use uh, a starch as well and I do use steam to get those scraps uh, ready to go um, so that they're they'll cut nicer so find a, a starch that you like to use Mary Allen's best presser whatever it is that you happen to have grab that get your um, iron ready get it heated up Grab your stash, obviously grab all the scraps, and I've got a bunch of it right here. You'll also need some more tools, and that would be your rulers and lots of uh, sharp blades for your rotary mat. So ga gather all of those. Now when I cut up my scrap stash, I not only cut squares in various sizes from lights, mediums, and darks, but I also cut strips. We need strip sets for our uh, quilting projects, right? So I make sure I cut up lots of strips. In my stash, I personally like to have one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half inch wide strips. And those strips can be anywhere from 12 inches long to the whole width of the fabric. Just depends on what's available and what I need. I also like to go through my uh, bins and see what I'm running low on. I do know that today I need to uh, devote some time on getting some three and a half inch squares from lights, mediums, and darks cut because I'm doing a lot of 12 inch blocks or 12 and a half inch unfinished blocks and that does require a lot of three and a half inch squares and some four depending on if I'm making half square triangles. And the third thing that I'll do when I'm cutting up my stash is I will go around my studio and grab all of my templates. I've got some rhombuses, half hexes, tumblers, you can grab Dresden's, drunkard's paths, whatever template rulers you have. And I will cut up lights, mediums, and darks from those various template rulers. And that way I'll have complete sets of those already cut, ready to go. Let's say I have a project or a quilt that I need to make really, really quickly. It's so maybe a, a baby quilt for a shower or something. I can go down to my studio and go to maybe the Dresden's or uh, go to the tumblers and grab lights, mediums, and darks and start putting together a beautiful quilt. It's already cut. It's ready to go. I just need to piece it together. So they're, they're wonderful to have the, all of this cut and ready to go in your scrap stash so that you can make beautiful quilts really quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this mess of fabrics over to my ironing station and I'm going to lay out as many as will fit nicely on the ironing station there and I'll spray them all and then I'll steam them and press them and get them nice and uh, pressed and I'll lay that group up on the cutting station. I'll grab another batch of messy fabrics, put it on the ironing station, get it pressed and I'll get myself a nice a pile of very neatly pressed fabrics ready to be cut. And then I'll meet you back at the cutting station here and I'll show you how I go through and cut. So I'm back at the cutting station. I have my rotary cutter. <clears throat> my, I've got a rotating mat, which I'll use for the smaller pieces. That makes it easier. Of course, my um, cutting mat here. And then I have a nice stack of freshly pressed scraps that I'm going to start working with. And when you watch my video, um, that corresponds to the speedy solutions to cut and organize your scrap stash. One of the first rules that I have in my video is 
uh, my first scrapping wool, and that is um, cut the largest piece possible from each and every scrap that you put in front of you. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you that. There's also the selvedge rule and the bias rule, and I'll kind of cover some of that as I'm scrapping this up today. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and get started here. So first of all, we'll see that I've got some strips, and some of these strips are, um, they're not quite two and they're not two and a half. So what I'm going to do is make sure that my strips are the exact size that they should be. So I'm going to grab this ruler down here and I am going, to, I love these um, little tools that I got. I'll put a link um, on there in the description box below to share with you where I got those that tool it connects to your rulers and you can literally butt up your fabric underneath there right on that two inch line and so I'm just going to clean up this strip and this particular scrap is going to be put in my two inch strip bin it's only about oh I don't know maybe 15 inches long and that's fine that will be fine for uh, my scrap stash and if you don't uh, want to um, save strips, you could certainly subcut this into two inch squares and then just go through and subcut that into two inch squares. I'm going to save that as a two inch strip. This one I believe I'm going to cut into squares. I think I should be able to get some three and a half inch squares from here. The six and a half inch ruler, the OmniGrid ruler, is one that I love. It is so versatile and I can cut so many different sizes. When I cut my squares, I cut in half inch increments and I start at one and a half inches. I don't cut anything smaller than a one and a half inch square because that is going to finish at one inch. And to me, a one inch square is small enough. But this is your scrap stash. If you like to make quilts that have really small squares, then definitely go ahead and cut your square smaller. But I cut um, one and a half up to 10 inches and half inch increments, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, etc., up to 10 inch. I love to have lots of 10 inch squares. Those are great layer cakes. There's so many patterns that you can make quilt patterns using the 10 inch squares. I also like to cut 12 and a half inch background squares for applique, etc. And I'll cut all of those squares in the three values, lights, mediums, and darks. So in this case, these are going to be some, uh, some darks for me. And oh, this is perfect. These are going to make perfect three and a half inch squares. So I am going to subcut these. And then I'm going to go over and grab this sample board where I'm going to place all of them and show you how I organize them as I'm cutting them. They're kind of getting off. They're kind of hairy. I need to trim up the side, I think, too. And then this last one here. By pressing them, it just gives your fabric, your scraps, much more body. And then you're able to use them better. So let me, let me go grab that board. I want to share with you how I organize this on my table as I'm cutting. Okay, a couple of things. I brought my uh, charts over here and I just wanted to share with you how I organize this. I like to have this. This is on a poster board and I've got sticky notes from one and a half all the way up to six and a half inches here. And then I'll put strips and templates on this second one. And I'll just lay that off to the side. And as I'm cutting, I'll organize them. So all of these three and a half inch squares that I just cut, I will place above the three and a half inch sticky note and I've taped these down. And it's just a very handy way to uh, keep things organized as you're cutting. Uh, the two inch and the two and a half inch can start looking the same. The three and the three and a half inch can start looking the same. So if you immediately place them in a pile next to the corresponding size, then you're going to keep things a little bit more organized. So that's what I do. One of these has um, everything up to six and a half. This is strips and templates. And of course, my third one, which has the seven 
up to 10 and the 12 and a half is over there. I did not bring that over to the table here. Another thing I wanted to share with you, I couldn't think of the name of this when I was showing you this tool. Uh, these are called the, um, they're made by guidelines for quilting. It's called a quilt ruler upgrade kit. And you get these really um, handy little plastic pieces in here that you can put on the back of the long ruler or the shorter rulers. This one is for a very long ruler and it just makes it very convenient as you're cutting your fabric is going to butt right up against that on that whatever wherever you lay that uh, guideline it could be any any measurement across the ruler but I love it so um, if you're interested in these check it out I believe they even have a video but guidelines for quilting is what it's called so check that out and uh, now we're going to go back to some more cutting here all right, so here I have a piece of fabric. I'm going to go ahead and um, fold it. Whenever you look at your scrap, locate the straight edge. Typically, every piece of scrap has a straight edge somewhere. And what I cut are from previous projects. So there's usually a straight edge that is on that scrap somewhere. And I can see it here. So I am going to use this straight edge down here and begin cutting. Now let's see what size. I can't get a four inch square out of that, but I can get three and a half inch squares. This is my straight edge right here. I'm going to have to fix that when I come around to the side, but this is going to be great. I am needing three and a half inch um, squares, so this is great. You want to, the goal is to keep all of your squares on the straight of grain. So here I've got two more three and a half inch squares. And let's see what we have. Here's the leftover remnant. And I'm going to cut a three and a half inch from that. And then what you can also do, and I don't have it made up today, but in my um, Speedy Solutions Techniques book, there is a doggy pillow in here or a pet pillow pattern you can make. Uh, using your scraps and then you can tape it or clip it to your cutting table and then all of this stuff these remnants can be put in that um, pillow that you have hanging off your cutting station and every three or four months once it's filled your pet can have a new pillow so that's what you can do with those so here we've got some three and a half inch squares I'm going to put those over here on my three and a half inch table I think these are probably more three and a half. Let me see what they happen to be. Yes. So I got two three and a half inch squares there. And let's see what we have here. This is an inch and a half. I do have a great pattern. It's called the New Year Nine Patch. I've got a tutorial out there. I'll link that below. If you have a lot of one and a half inch squares in your stash, it is a great pattern to make up, um, to use up a one and a half inch squares. So now here I have a leftover a strip set and the strips, and here's another one right here. The strips I think are probably two and a half. Yes, they were two and a half inches. So what you could do with these strip sets is go ahead and complete it by cutting two and a half inch widths from this and then you could use that at some point in the future when um, you need to put together a light and dark strip set. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to move my guide here to the two and a half inch mark. So I've got it lined up with the two and a half inch line there. I'm going to butt it up to that line there. And there we go. I have some strip sets here. I'll continue cutting those, get those ready to go. I will add these two and a half inch strip sets to either my two and a half inch strip bin or maybe my two and a half inch square bin, uh, whichever, because then I'll, I'll see them. I'll regularly see them and that way I'll know that they're there and I will use them. The next time I need a light dark, or you could even consider this a medium dark, depending on the rest of your uh, fabric. You know what? This is not laying here properly. I need to make sure I get 
have that butted up. Well, I think I'm going to leave this one here and cut this one on its own. All right. So those were some strip sets. Now the rest of this I am going to cut into two and a half inch squares. And what I'm going to do here, I do need to clean up that one edge. So I'm going to, let's see here. The rotating mat is a very handy little mat to have. I will link in the description box the one that I'm using. There are so many out in the market. So now I've got some two and a half inch squares, two and a half inch strip sets. All right, now I want to give you some more variety here. Let's see what else we've got over here. So let's go to something that's really wild. All right, so uh, I obviously was using this for some kind of an applique where I needed some very large, strange looking pieces. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of bias here. So there's a couple of things you could do. First of all, again, I want to cut the largest piece possible out of this. I think the first thing I'm going to do is clean up that fuzz on the edge. It's bugging me. So that is what I'm going to do first and foremost. Just get rid of all of this on the edge. All right, so that fuzz is gone. Now, there's a couple of things you could do. Along the bottom here, I could simply cut the largest square possible out of each of these. I could cut a strip right here. If I was needing, this is probably about two inches, maybe. Let's see here. Yep, I could probably get a two inch strip, and this is on the fold, so it'd be a pretty good size strip. Or I could get uh, three, can't quite get a three and a half inch square, but I could get three inch squares from right in here. Uh, so there's a number of things you could do. Um, the straight of grain is down here. This is on the fold. I could, when I open it up, I could actually get quite a large section out of there. So you take a look at what, your, what you need in your stash and start uh, cutting based upon that. I do like to use a lot of six and a half inch squares in different patterns that I have, so I am going to actually cut a six and a half inch square from this one. I need to flip it around here since I'm right handed. Okay, so I got a six and a half inch square there. Let's see what I can get here. So again, I'm cutting a large piece from this. Whenever you can, cut the largest piece possible and it will just give you quite an assortment of scraps. So I have two six and a half inch squares and I'm going to go put these on my blue cardstock there. Okay, now we have this left over. So I could simply cut um, I think I am going to cut a two and a half inch strip here. this one all right and I'm going to cut some two and a half inch squares whoops so from this oddball piece, I'm getting quite a few different size scraps. From this little thing, I could get, I can't quite, quite get a two inch, 
But if I put these together, and again, my straight of grain is at the bottom, so I'm using this to get as close to the straight of grain as possible, and I can cut two one and a half inch squares. There we go. And you can do the same with this. And it looks like I can probably get quite a few one and a half inch strips from this. Or squares, actually. Clean up that edge there. So I could keep this as a one and a half inch strip. It's about maybe 10 inches or so, nine or 10 inches. Or I could cut these into one and a half inch squares. I do have quite a few one and a half inch squares, so I'm gonna keep that as a strip. So from that odd piece of fabric, I've gotten a variety of things. I've gotten two six and a half inch squares. I've gotten four two and a half inch squares, a couple of one and a half inch squares, a strip here. And here's another odd piece from that same strip. What can I do with this? Let's see here. Again, I'm following the bottom here. I can get a three inch. Let me see if I can get a, th a lot of three inches here. I think I could. So what I'm gonna do, is move this little guide so I'm at the three inch mark so the guide is on the three inch mark there and all right Now I'm getting some three inch squares from that fabric as well. So we've gotten three inch, two and a half inch, one and a half inch. We've gotten a one and a half inch strip. And we got, I still have more that I could actually cut from that. And we also got these six and a half inch squares from that oddball piece. And now these are usable. These are things that I can use in patterns that I have. So um, I love being able to do this and have them all cut and ready to go. So I'm gonna get these organized and then I'll pull something more down. Now this is the 10 inch uh, template square. You can buy these from a variety of companies. Misery Star sells them. And I love cutting my scrap stash into 10 inch squares whenever possible because you can use these 10 inch squares for so many wonderful patterns, disappearing blocks specifically. So uh, let me go ahead. I'm lining it up on the straight edge over here. And whoops. Now this is what I want to share with you. This is a selvedge. You can see the selvedge um, because it's the edge of the fabric. 
it's a tighter weave and you can often see holes there that always needs to be removed from fabric you don't always notice it so much on the front side but on the back side you can see that you should remove selvedge from any scrap as well as um, any uh, piece of fabric that you're going to be using in a quilt whether it's the backing or on the front that will affect how your quilt hangs so I am going to simply uh, cut away that selvedge and it's about a three-fourth of an inch cut now I've removed it that will be my um, straight edge here I think I can actually cut a five inch square from that and that's what I'm going to do we'll flip it around so as you can see um, I've got quite an assortment here that I have been cutting I've got a strip five three and a half three two and a half two one and a half and now I've got a bunch of these little leftover pieces uh, from previous projects and um, so I'll go through and measure all of those we'll see what I'm going to do with those some of those I think will probably turn into one and a half inch pieces let's see what this will turn into some of the scraps that you'll find in your stash may already be exactly oh this is great um, it's a three and a half inch here are some more strips these could certainly be two inch squares let's see if they'll yes very nice okay so I've got actually this is a two and a half inch and then I think I'll get a two inch out of this there we go and here's some more strip pieces I'll measure these later let's see what I can do with this as you can see a lot of my scraps are just leftover remnants from projects and I just like to try to use them as much as possible uh, this is not going to be three and a half nope it's just a little bit shy so I'm going to cut this at three there we go now I have another one of these oddball pieces and I could certainly um, get a lot of nice large pieces cut from this let's see how large I can go I think I'll use this one right here I could get six and a half inch squares from this I could get seven inch squares I don't have many patterns that call for seven inch so I'm not going to cut that I'd probably go with a six and a half or even a five um, another thing you could do with something like this is get your um, templates out and you could start cutting uh, your templates whenever you do uh, cut templates I'm going to move these out of the way here so that I don't accidentally cut them so whenever you do um, cut your templates what you want to do is find the widest area on the template and then cut strips from your fabric and then you can simply flip the template along that this I believe is going to be a five inch yes so this is five inches wide from here from the straight edge to the straight edge so I am going to cut a five inch um, strip from this and I will cut some rhombuses from that so let me go ahead and you need a bigger ruler than the one that I have uh, this might work this might work I'm going to move this guide down to the five inch line so the guide is under there on that five inch line and I'm actually gonna I think before I do that I need to cl clean up that fuzzy edge I just don't like the fuzzy edge so 
I'm going to clean that up. Okay, get rid of some of that fuzz. All right, now flip it back over. And I am going to cut a five inch strip. So I'm lining this edge here up with that guide underneath on that five inch. So it's butting right up against the fabric. Oops. And here we go again. All right, now what I can do with my rhombus is simply line it up on the five inch strip. And I have it double folded here. In fact, I need to bring this back a little bit. Line up both sides. And I simply just keep flipping this. I'm going to have to turn it like this, first of all, because I'm right-handed, so I can cut it on this side. There. So there are two rhombuses. And now I just line it up on that line. There's a nice little um, edge here so I can get rid of the dog ear. So that's gone. And here we go. Get rid of the dog ear. That will help line things up. So now I have four rhombuses. So from that fabric, I was able to get some rhombuses. I also have, where did I put it? A tumbler, which... Is a, uses a five inch strip and I'm going to go ahead and cut a tumbler from this and then I will add these templates that I've cut to my template uh, bins so they are ready to go and you have to be careful on um, the bias edges of your scraps I often get people asking me, how do you know what's a bias? If you study your fabric very closely, you can find the lengthwise and the crosswise grains of thread. And if you're, um, you want to keep your ruler lined up as closely as possible to the lengthwise and crosswise grains of thread. Now, look at this right here. This is on the bias, and look how that will stretch that can really stretch on the bias. This one is a little bit on the bias, so it does some stretching too. This is the straight of edge right here, straight of grain right there, and so that one does not have any stretch to it. That is the strongest going across here. So what you need to do is just look at your fabric, fabric very carefully, um, play with it a little bit, see where, where it's stretchy. If you're not sure, uh, maybe you could, uh, there's a garment technique where you can pull a thread and find the straight of grain. As you've seen here, I'm pulling a thread and I'm locating the straight of grain. I'm pulling on it. Don't know that you're going to be able to see it there, but then I could actually cut this. Let me grab my scissors. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this. It's so intricate here, but I pulled on the grain on this thread and it made a line on the underside here on which I was able to use my scissors and cut on that line and you'll see that was the thread and it's showing me where the uh, straight of grain is now I've just pulled it out and you can kind of see hopefully you can kind of see where that thread is missing that's the straight of grain and um, so then that right there is the straight of grain. This is on the bias, that's on the bias, this is on the straight of grain. 
and it's pretty much pulling. If your thread will come out like that and just pull all the way across, you know it's on the straight of grain. So if I lined up my ruler and cut, let me grab a ruler here. I need a small one. I had to locate a smaller ruler. So that is the straight of grain right there. And if I were to line up my ruler and make my cut based upon this line, then I could get a, a perfectly square square from that. And the only thing I could really cut from that would be about a one and a half inch square from this particular piece. But I could still get a one and a half inch square from that piece. And it would be completely square right there because this is the straight of grain. I'm lining my ruler up on that straight of grain and I would cut the square right out of that. And then the rest of it I would use in my um, pet doggy pillow and Bailey would get a new pillow. About every three to four months she'll have a new pillow that's been stocked. So that's how you would handle these uh, triangles that we often end up with for in our remnants. Um, it's sometimes difficult to find the straight of grain, but you can do that. Just find a, a thread that's loose, and if you can pull the thread and it comes off, then you know that's the straight edge, and you can cut a square from that edge there, lining up your ruler right there. And do that with all of your uh, triangles. And then the leftover pieces can go in your... Um, uh, scrap pillow and so they won't go to waste they won't go into the trash and then of course uh, remember about the selvage rule this this is the uh, square that we cut but first we remove the selvage from the edge of the fabric make sure you remove all of that so those are just some of the things that I do as I'm cutting up my stash I like to cut the largest piece possible whenever possible however when you do have a piece that is very odd and it definitely has a lot of bias, you might want to cut just small pieces from it. And again, don't forget to grab your templates and uh, cut up template pieces from your stash and definitely cut up strips from your stash. You decide what size squares and so forth that you want in your stash. For me, I like one and a half inch all the way up to 10 inch squares and I cut only in one half inch increments. So let's say um, when I pull a pattern to uh, create a quilt, and let's say the pattern calls for two and three quarter inch square. Well, I don't cut in my scrap stash two and three quarters, but I do cut three inch squares. So what I will do if the pattern calls for, let's say 60 dark two and three quarter inch squares, I'll go to my bin, I will grab a big stack that might be around 60 and then I'll take them and cut the two sides, a quarter inch off two sides, and I will very quickly have 60 two and three quarter inch dark squares that I can use in my pattern without having to cut up yardage and go through that whole process. So it certainly is a much faster way to accomplish that. So I've gone through that batch of fabric and cut all of that messy fabric up into squares and I've laid them here so that you can see what I have. Um, I've got some six and a half inch, five inch, four and a half inch, four, three and a half, three, two and a half, two and one and a half inch. And then I've got some strips and things that I'll show you below. What I'll do before I put these in my bins is get them sorted based upon, upon the value. So here I've got some six and a half inch squares. These are dark. These would probably be considered mediums because they have a lot of white in them. So when I put them in my bins, I will place them in the appropriate pile. And the bins that I use are often these, um, uh, they're just a uh, shoe box, plastic shoe boxes. You can get them at the dollar store. Make sure the lids fit properly. You want to make sure that you label all the way around so that as you slide them into your um, bookshelves, which is where I store all of mine, I can see what size it is. I guess I don't have one on the back here. I should do that, but I like to have them all along the outside edges so I can see at a glance what size they are. But I'll organize them based upon value. So I'll take these five inch squares. And here I've got light. This one would probably be in the medium pile. This would be in the darks pile. And so when I open my five inch bin, I'll place those squares in the appropriate areas. And the four inch, we've got a light. This is probably more of a light as well. So those will probably all be lights. I've only got a couple of these. This is more dark, that's more medium. Those are the four inch. Here is a bunch of the three inch and I've got some darks. 
This red is probably going to be dark. There's some more greens that are dark. This is going to be more of a medium. These are probably more of a light. Here, mediums, darks. So I'm going to sort them all and place them in those bins based upon their value, lights, mediums, and darks. And remember, value is relative. It's relative to what it's sitting next to. Uh, so some piece of fabric might look uh, light compared to this, but if you put this next to this, um, it's actually darker. So it's relative. And so when you're pulling your squares, it's uh, going to depend on um, what it's sitting around. So I don't get too hung up on which value pile I place them in as I'm putting them away. Um, I'll worry about that as I'm actually putting the square of the pieces together. And if you'd like, I'm going to be teaching a free Zoom class in April. It's my mystery quilt class where I like to share with you how you can use your scrap stash, how you can use the values, lights, mediums, and darks. I'm going to put a link below to my mystery quilt class and you can sign up for that if you'd like to register for it. Um, but I'm going to go through each of these piles and get them sorted, lights, mediums, and darks, and I'm going to put them all away in their appropriate bin. I'm also going to do the same with these uh, strips and templates. So I've got a couple of uh, rhombus templates. I've got a tumbler template. I have a 10 inch square, so I have a larger plastic bins that I'm going to use for my larger squares. I do also like to cut 12 and a half inch lights, mediums, and darks for um, background squares for applique. Um, I have some strip sets. I'll probably put these in my two and a half inch uh, container. Um, that's where I'm going to store these. Here are some one and a half inch strips, and I do just fold my strips in a shoe boxes like this and lay them in those containers, and I do sort them as well. I'll have a stack aside which will be the lights, and then we'll have some mediums, and then we'll have some darks in that bin. So these are all the one and a half inch, and here are some two inch lights, mediums, and darks. And when I cut strip sets, for my purposes, I like to cut them one and a half inches wide all the way up to three inches wide. Uh, you can cut whatever you choose. Three and a half inches wide is typically the widest strip set that I use in most patterns, so that's where I stop. But this is how I like to get them organized and ready to get put in their bins. And then definitely sign up for my uh, register for my mystery quilt class for April. Love to show you how you can use your scrap stack. Thank you all for joining me today as I have gone through and cut up my scrap stash. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you had answered some questions for you. And if you do have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to um, comment below and, and uh, let me know what things you're working on or what, uh, what questions you might have. Don't forget also to check out my Speedy Solutions book that's out on my site. I'll have that link below. And be sure to watch that complete video tutorial that I give. That's the Speedy Solutions to Cut and Organize Your Scrap Stash. So you'll know step by step everything that you'll need to do to get your scrap stash ready to make beautiful quilts. And I hope you'll register for my mystery quilt that's coming up here soon. And just want to thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. I hope you're enjoying the National Quilting Day today. Have a great week, and we'll see you on Monday with a new scrappy block.